Hi, my name is Methat Al Masri, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the service reference in Visual Studio 2019 to consume a REST API with open API description from a C-sharp console application. Before you proceed, of course, you need to have Visual Studio 2019. And the API that you're consuming has to have an open API programming language agnostic interface description for REST APIs. Today, for testing purposes, we're going to be using an open API endpoint at this address. So let's get started. First, let's start with Visual Studio. I'll create a new project. And for today, it's just going to be a simple console application.NET Core project. Let me call it console app two, doesn't really matter. And click on create here. So it's very simple. I'm going to right click on the project node, add, and we'll choose service reference, which is this one here. We click on that. And here you've got two choices. There's this choice at the top for service dependencies and another choice for service references, open API and gRPC. I'm going to click on add here. I'll choose open API. API and then click on next. In this choice here, I'm going to choose URL and for the URL, I'm going to choose the swagger.json endpoint of my service. So let me go back to my service and you will see that over here, there is this address for the swagger.json file. So I'm going to right click and choose copy link address and come back to my service here and paste that. So this is what I've got here. Let me click on finish and it's checking the project endpoint and loading the definition for that service. So if I close here, you will see that we have here an open APIs folder in there, there is the swagger.json file. And this swagger.json file got copied from the endpoint. And it is the file that contains all the definitions that are needed to interact with that endpoint. And you will see here, just like on the service itself, there are many, many endpoints. And the one that we're going to be playing with today is this student's endpoint. You've got a get all, you've got a post, you've got a get by ID, you've got a put and you've got a delete. So that's the endpoint we're going to be playing with. Now, let me do a build to make sure that everything works. Now, if you go into File Explorer, you will see that there is a proxy class that has been created. Let's go here under OBJ, there is a file by the name of swaggerclient.cs. So let's open that swaggerclient.cs in another editor like Notepad++. And here it is. You can see that there is a C-sharp class that was created that acts as the proxy class that allows you to interact with the service. You don't need to change or do anything to this class. It suffices that you know that it was created and it's there for you to use. Another way of finding that proxy class is to go back into add service reference. And of course, this is the service reference we created. You can click on these three dots and choose view generated code. And it will also show you the proxy class that was created. In the case of our students, endpoint, you will find later on that the Swagger client object has five methods that allow you to interact with the student's endpoint. The first one is students all async, and that allows you to retrieve all the students. Then students two async allows you to get one student by ID. Students async allows you to do a post. In other words, it allows you to add a student. Students three async allows you to do a put. In other words, it allows you to update student data. And finally, students four async allows you to delete. In other words, delete student by ID. Needless to say, these names are not very intuitive. So I hope that this translation table helps you to decipher what all these methods mean. So let's get started and try and consume the endpoint rest service. So I'm going to add here a method which I will call display students. And let me resolve all of these namespaces. So I need a base URL and my base URL will be this endpoint here. I'm going to copy that, come over here and create a constant. So I'll come in here and say const string base URL 
equals to this. Put that in quotes. Going back to the display students method, I need to instantiate an HTTP client object because the Swagger client, when I instantiate it, I need to give it the base URL and then the HTTP client object. Using that Swagger client object, you will see here that it's, it's got all these methods. So if I go student here, it's got all these students method here. Students two async, three async, four async, students all async, and students async. This students all async gets you all the students. Students to async gets you student by ID. Students async allows you to do a post. Students three allows you to do a put and students four allows you to do a delete. So let's just use students all async in order to retrieve all the students. And configure await is used here for improving performance and avoiding deadlocks. So this returns the items from the endpoint and we can iterate through the items and display the student ID, first name, last name, and school. So let's call this display students method from inside of our main method. So that will be done by calling await and display students. And of course, our main method needs to run asynchronously. So we can put an async task here. And let's run this application. So I'm hitting Control F5. It's compiling and running. It will take some time because don't forget that this is a REST API and sure enough, we get back our results. Next, let us get one student by ID. So we can add another method here and let us, let's put it down under display students. And this is what it looks like, get students by ID and we can pass it an ID. Again, we instantiate a Swagger client object by passing the base URL and an instance of the HTTP client. And then we can simply call students to async, which we said before gets a student by ID, pass it the ID and it returns for us a student. So let's call this method and pass it one of the IDs that we have. So I'm going to comment this out and await get student by ID and pass it one student ID. And the one I know exists in the system is A00 and six ones. Let's try this out. And here we go. And it does get us Jane Smith from the endpoint. Next, let us insert a student. So I have another method here, which I call add student. Again, we instantiate an HP client object and use that client object when we instantiate our Swagger client object by passing it together with the base URL into the Swagger client constructor. Now here I'm instantiating a student object and note that the student object becomes available when you create the proxy class because Nowhere in our solution explorer do we see student, but it is part of that Swagger client proxy class that was created for us. So here I instantiate a student object, which I want to insert. In fact, let's change this to something we can remember one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have Joe Ray here, whose school is forestry. Simply we call the students async method on this Swagger client object and pass it the student. It returns a response. Now. I have a catch statement here, and that is because I noticed that this method in the service returns a 201, and that HTTP code 201 causes an exception. That's why I did a catch here, and I'm simply displaying the exception. So let's call this method add student and maybe display the students after we add a student. So let me copy this, come over here, comment out get student by ID, and maybe just insert it here. I'll call the add students method. And of course I have to await because it is async. And then after that, I want to display my students just so that I can see that I have indeed added a new student. So let me run this and here we go. You can see that this has been returned, which means that it has indeed added a new student and it returned a 201. And over here, this is the exception that was returned. I simply displayed the exception and over here, I'm displaying all my students. 
and you can see that my new student is this one joe roy in the school of forestry and it has indeed been added next let us update a student so i have a method here called update student by id i'm going to pass it the id and just like before we instantiate an hp client object pass it to the constructor of the swagger client object together with the base url and here i have a student object that is presumably the student that's being updated i'm going to give it the same id and i'm going to change the name to pam day in the school of nursing and then i call students 3 async pass it the id and the student object and it will do a post so let's call this method and update the student so instead of adding i'm going to update the student and the id is going to be a 00123456 which is the id that we create and i'll do an await on this so we are going to update the student and the new name is going to be pam day in the school of nursing and then we'll display the students just to make sure so let's try it again see if we are able to update the student and here we go this is the student that we updated and indeed we've changed the name to pam day in the school of nursing finally let us do a delete so i'm going to add a delete method down here and this is the delete method we're going to pass it an id and the different thing about the delete method is that you call the students for async and pass it the id and that will do a delete so let us test this out i'll come here and instead of the update i'll comment that out and call the delete method and pass it the id of the student that we created so now we should be able to delete and then display the students to make sure that we don't have the student with id a 00123456 let's try this out and as you can see the student with id a 00123456 is not there and we're back to where we started so i hope you found this video useful and realized how easy it is to consume a rest api using visual studio 2019 it's just a few very easy steps to do that thank you and i hope to see you in future videos take care and good luck